Hi, everybody, from this CGO 2022 online session. I'm Cédric Bastoul, Chief Scientist at Huawei and working from Huawei's Paris Research Center in France. And I'm pleased to present you some of our work on optimizing GPU deep learning operators with polyhedral scheduling constraint injection. So this work has been done jointly between two R&D groups in France and China in the context of the artificial intelligence and deep learning framework MindSpore. Artificial intelligence frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, or MindSpore are key tools for the whole AI field because of their ability to automatically map high-level DNN models to efficient parallel implementations and this for a variety of target architectures. Hence, they support very rapid design of new models and fast training on a huge amount of data because they hide the complexity of the target architecture uh, to AI scientists. Specifically, MindSpore has been designed from the ground to target all scenarios. This means from the user point of view in academia, being able to develop new ideas and new models with ease of use and ease of tuning. And from the user point of view in industry, it means to support large data sets with high performance, low cost and ease of deployment. This also means from the backend point of view to cover many target architectures like embedded systems, personal computing devices, up to big data centers, all using the same framework, while the best optimization can be extremely different depending on the target architecture, which is one of the points of this work. So typically, AI framework receive as input uh, data sets and models in the form of computation graph, where each node uh, each node receives tensors, make computation on them, and produces some tensors. During its compilation process, the computation graph goes through many passes. Some of them are independent of the target architecture, like type derivation, automatic differentiation, and so on. And some of them are dependent on the target architecture, like automatic parallelization that achieves data and computation partitioning from the different, for the different computing nodes, Memory optimization that decides the best plan for memory allocation and reallocation of tensors, or kernel fusion, which fuses several nodes of the computation graph together in the aim of improving data locality and use of processing elements, minimizing the generation, storing, and communication of intermediate results, and reducing the cost of kernel launch on accelerators. However, uh, when the generated fused, fused operators uh, are not within the scope of optimized libraries, then we need an automatic kernel generator to complement those libraries. And this is the role of AKG, standing for Auto Kernel Generator in MindSpore. To generate efficient codes, AKG can exploit the regular nature of operators and use polyhedral compilation. However, it has to face the challenge of optimization for all scenarios with specific optimization for specific hardware. So typically, the auto kernel generator receives each fused operator in the form of a polyhedral intermediate representation that simply corresponds to a loop-based code accessing multidimensional arrays that are the tensors. And then the polyhedral scheduler is in charge of uh, critical actions and decisions, such as extracting parallelism to expose parallel dimensions or loops, extracting permutability that corresponds to finding sequences of loops that can be tiled later, and achieving other loop level optimization to improve data locality or to improve uh, uh, data access pattern efficiency. So we start from an unscheduled polyhedral representation and we find uh, the scheduling. Uh, and uh, so the output is a scheduled polyhedral representation. Unfortunately, in the old scenario context, state-of-the-art uh, polyhedral scheduling has a big limitation to be a domain and target independent black box. Whatever the architecture is, uh, the most efficient algorithm works in the same way. It extracts outermost parallelism and optimize data locality. Those are extremely good properties. They are des desirable properties. But when we find something uh, to be improved, 
uh, we have to add a rescheduling pass in the compiler after the polyroll scheduling, which makes the compiler more complex. And it also makes the, uh, the optimiza optimization less efficient because it is local. Uh, I mean, we do optimization one after the other rather than global. I mean, putting all optimization constraints together in the scheduling engine. So our experience made us think that state-of-the-art polyhedral scheduling was missing a mechanism to control the optimization in terms of goals to be achieved, in terms of priorities between those goals, and also in terms of flexibility to specify cost models. Hence, we are proposing uh, a structured solution to incorporate optimization constraints decided by possibly nonlinear approaches, and we demonstrate our approach with application to optimize uh, load store vectorization on GPU. So during this presentation, I will first present our approach for polyhedral scheduling with constraint injection, explaining what polyhedral scheduling is about, how state-of-the-art scheduling algorithm works, and how we complement it with support for constraint injection. Next, I will present how we use this mechanism to optimize load store vectorization on GPU through a non-linear cost model enabled by our approach. And finally, I will conclude and present ongoing work. So first of all, for all those who are not familiar with the polyhedral scheduling, let me quickly explain what it is about. Polyhedral scheduling is to find affine functions associating uh, statement iterations to logical dates. For instance, let me use this simple code as an example. There are three statements in this code. Uh, S0 is outside uh, loops. S1 is inside one loop that runs uh, twice, so it will be executed twice. And each execution can be uh, uh, specified using the value of the loop counter. So we have, for instance, A of 0 is equal to S, and A of I1 is equal to S. Uh, and the third statement, S2, is uh, within a loop nest with two loops, iterating two times each, uh, so a total of four execution. And we have a big total of seven execution uh, for uh, all statements, and we can describe their ordering very simply using a one-dimensional scalar scheduling. So uh, uh, S0 is executed at date 0. The first uh, iteration of S1 is executed at date one, second iteration of uh, S1 at day two, and so on until the last date. We could also use multidimensional scalar scheduling. Uh, multidimensional dates are just like uh, clocks with hours, minutes, and seconds, for instance. And here we will have uh, S0 uh, executed at hour zero. Uh, first uh, iteration of S1 executed at hour one and minute zero. Second iteration of S1 at hour one and minute one, etc. And instead of using scalar values, we can use a more compact way by remarking that some dates component uh, correspond to the value of the loop counters. So for instance, here, that zero and one here is the same as the loop counter here. And uh, same for S2, uh, we have 0, 0, here 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. And so uh, we can specify the date of iterations uh, uh, using the uh, loop counters. So for instance, for S1, we have S1 of i is equal to 1i. And we can know every date for every iteration of S1 thanks to this uh, function. In the polyhedral scheduling, uh, uh, for each component of the date, we are using, in general, affine functions of the loop counters values, like i and j, constant parameters, like n, that we don't know, but we know it's constant, uh, and scalar values. And formally, we use a matrix notation like this, uh, uh, which sounds complex, we, but which is actually uh, uh, pretty simple. Uh, so the matrix holds all the coefficients of the affine functions. So for instance, if we have an affine function 1 times i plus 2 times j plus 3 times n plus 4, uh, then a row of the matrix T here uh, uh, stores all the coefficients 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and this representation is compact and expressive. Uh, it can express up to arbitrary sequences of loop transformations. 
And how to check whether scheduling respects uh, data dependencies uh, or how to generate a code that implements scheduling is well known out. So our problem is to discover the scheduling coefficients that implement the best optimization. And the state-of-the-art algorithm to do that, uh, to compute automatically optimizing scheduling coefficients, is known as Pluto. It has been proposed by Bandugula and his co-authors more than a decade ago. Uh, several improvements have been suggested since. Uh, um, and we can find implementations in open source software and libraries like Pluto or ISL. The principle of Pluto is to iteratively compute dimension per dimension, outermost to innermost, each component of the affine scheduling dimensions by taking, by taking into account three uh, uh, main sets of constraints and cost models. First, the validity constraints uh, cons restrict uh, the scheduling space to transformations that respect data dependencies. The idea is to make sure that the date of an iteration that depends on another iteration is always greater or equal to the date of the other, uh, other iteration. So uh, if you are producing some data, your date must be lower than the one that is uh, using that data. Okay, that's it. Uh, then we have the proximity uh, constraint which tries to minimize the difference between the dates of iterations that depend on each other. So if you are producing a data, you want the uh, uh, consumers of your data to, 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 to be scheduled as soon as possible. Uh, and this is a key uh, uh, to drive external parallelism uh, and data locality optimization. And finally, uh, we need to make sure that each new dimension of the scheduling contributes to iteration ordering. And this is to avoid finding the same function at every uh, scheduling dimension. And the strength of the Pluto algorithm uh, is that all those constraints can be translated to linear constraints. Hence, the scheduling algorithm basically builds uh, a system of linear constraints and uses an integer linear programming solver uh, to find a solution and to compute the scheduling coefficients. It is efficient enough to extract parallel loops, sequences of uh, uh, tileable loops, and data locality. However, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, and as we can see in this picture, uh, it does not depend on the target architecture, and we cannot control it to make better choices in uh, some specific cases like choosing the best parallel loops uh, to fit the number of calls, uh, like making sure the access patterns are efficient, like extracting innermost vector loops. And so this is what we will try to solve. And to provide such a control, we are proposing a structured way to inject constraints to the scheduling construction. Internally, we name this Mindtrix as a reference to Jedi Knight's ability to change someone's mind. Uh, yeah. So here, we like to change the polyrural scalar mind, telling it, we want to optimize this way. OK, and to specify what we want, we propose an abstraction called the, instruction constra uh, the influence constraint tree that stores constraints to be considered for the construction of the scheduling function with the possibility to link any coefficient uh, at any dimension for any statement. And it is organized as a tree to integrate both the scheduling dimensions in its depth and the priority in its breadth. Okay, the aim of this constraint tree is to tell the polyhedral uh, uh, scheduler what we want and to enable multiple uh, uh, optimization scenarios. We may, for instance, request some loops to be outermost, innermost, scheduled together, etc. Uh, and the polyhedral scheduler will have to manage uh, uh, those new constraints in addition to the usual constraints and cost models. So along with the constraint tree, we propose a revisited uh, scheduling construction that aims at uh, first uh, scheduling while respecting the most profitable scenario as described by the constraint tree. Uh, and this is implemented uh, thanks to a backtracking with priority uh, uh, management. Second, we want to use the original Pluto constraints and cost models when possible. 
may be a neutralizing progression constraints when they conflict with injected constraints and terminating depending on injected constraint satisfaction. And finally, uh, we need to respect uh, data dependencies at any price. Uh, so the additional uh, constraints will be dropped if they conflict with legality constraints. So all in all, the mind trick systems open the way to consider the target architecture. Uh, a possibly nonlinear optimizer will take the optimization decision and generate an, an influence constraint tree uh, uh, um, th that will be ultimately processed uh, by the revisited influence scheduling construction algorithm. So, of course, over constraining the scheduling construction may not be possible. But in the context of AI fused operator that holds only few dependencies, uh, uh, our experience is extremely positive. And anyway, if the additional constraints are not feasible at all, uh, the technique is strictly similar to the original Pluto algorithm. So we have seen how it is possible to inject additional constraints. And now let's study how we can benefit from this mechanism to achieve better optimization in the context of AI fused operators on GPU, and more specifically, how to better optimize load store vectorization in that context. So first, let me clarify our optimization objectives. Our goal is to optimize the number of memory transactions. And to achieve that, our technical goal is first, to enable the use of explicit vector types uh, to load store data by blocks, Second, to maximize memory coalescing by making sure the adjacent thread uh, uh, access uh, adjacent memory locations. And as a side note, this second goal is often the highest of unique priority in many compiler techniques, but we experience better results by targeting the use of explicit vectors uh, first. And finally, we want to maximize self-temporal uh, locality for each thread. And according to these technical goals, an optimizer has to identify the optimization objectives. First, by identifying the probable best innermost dimensions for each statement to prepare the use of explicit vector types. Second, by identifying the probable best next dimension organization uh, to maximize coalescing. And finally, uh, to identify statements that should be scheduled together. The optimizer will then translate those optimization objectives to an influence constraint tree. For instance, uh, setting uh, uh, scheduling coefficients to zero until decided otherwise to push a loop in almost, or setting scheduling coefficients to be equal to force loop fusion. And the optimizer will generate a limited set of scenarios from the most constrained to the less constrained. For a deeper intuition about the work of the optimizer, uh, it is about selecting for each statement at each scheduling depth the most appropriate dimension. For the innermost dimension uh, to target vectorization and for the next dimensions uh, to minimize memory jumps. For instance, in such a code, uh, the optimizer would identify the loop k to be the innermost and to be strip mined uh, uh, so that it will be removed by using explicit vectors. Then it will select the loop i as the next innermost loop to minimize memory jumps. So in, in such a case, the scheduler has not much remaining freedom, but in more realistic cases, uh, as in AI fused operators, uh, there are more dimensions and the scheduler has still a lot to do. Our cost function, uh, uh, for the dimension identification shown here uh, is described in details uh, in the paper. It handles many aspects of the performance model and could not be used directly in the procedural scheduler because of its nonlinear nature. Uh, our approach has been developed and integrated within AKG, uh, which is available along with MindSpore in open source. Uh, we applied it to all the fused operator of seven typical networks from computer vision and natural language processing. Although our baseline here at one uh, is uh, standard ISL library scheduling, which implements a variation of the Pluto algorithm more suitable for GPUs. And we compared the performance uh, against manual hand-tuned scheduling and our approach with and without the use of explicit vector types. 
Results shows that our approach is always beneficial, uh, from modest improvements uh, up to very uh, good speedups, uh, uh, especially when many transpose operators are involved, like in ResNet. Note that many times the ba uh, baseline was already very good, uh, but it was because it was lucky. Uh, and no constraint was actually forcing the result to have the right form. Only the input was provided in a convenient way. Uh, contrary to this, our additional constraints secure uh, the good results. As a conclusion, in this work, we are proposing an approach to make polyroad scheduling more open. We provided a structured way to influence the scheduling through constraint injection. The new constraints uh, can be decided by a nonlinear optimizer, hence outside the limits of the polyhedral model, according to the input problem and or the target architecture properties. It can also propose different optimization scenarios if the best ones are not feasible. It is fully integrated within the polyhedral scheduler, which keeps its own linear constraints and cost models. Hence, it enables uh, global optimization and reduces the need uh, for uh, uh, rescheduling passes in the compiler. Finally, we demonstrated its applicability by targeting load store vectorization on GPU, exploiting both vector types and coalescing. Ongoing work uh, aim at uh, using constraint injection and also cost model uh, injection to optimize code uh, for domain-specific accelerators such as ASSET. So thanks a lot for your interest in this work, and I will be happy to answer questions during the online session of CGO or at this email address. Thank you.